Hey there folks, I'm bad at editing, so I'm going to subject you to a uh, train of thought, stream of consciousness video on 4th uh, edition of Dungeons and Dragons, which I think is fantastic, and that everyone was playing and thinking about incorrectly. Uh, so some of the bigger complaints about 4th edition are uh, like the length of combat, people say it takes too long. Uh, they say that the skill check system is weird, and that... Uh, like the way it's presented in the Dungeon Master's Guide is not super great and uh, people frequently view it as like you have to optimize and like there are certain combat feats that mean you have to take them and I think that uh, all of these things mean that we are pointing in a certain direction and that if you play the game according to like the way that these things are going then you're going to have a much better time. And like the game is designed to try and do certain particular things. Uh, so I've got, I've got my book, Thumbnail, maybe. Thumbnail? Yes. Book. Uh, so we're going to go through some of that, and mostly for my reference, we're going to talk about some things. Uh, and yeah, we're going to go about it. So I think what 4th edition is trying to do is it's trying to generate pulpy characters. Uh, characters have a tremendous amount of HP. So, like, if we go to the Paladin class, uh, because this is a thing that I am capable of doing. Um, uh, they start, if you have a 10 constitution, they start with 15 hit points base. Uh, and if they have a plus one modifier, uh, just for ease of use, that's 16 const uh, constitution. Or that, sorry, that's 16 hit points at first level, which means that every time that they use a healing surge, they're going to get four hit points back, uh, plus whatever uh, bonuses and uh, th. There's a tremendous amount of like thp and stuff through uh, healing laser from clerics and even the paladin's own skill. Uh, so like you're easily like at first level. Uh, sorry, and it's important to re uh, mention here that the uh, paladin has 10 plus constitution modifier uh, healing surges per day. Which means they've got like roughly like 60 to 100 hit points at first level. Depending on if they hit with their things and how much THP they roll and blah, 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 blah. Uh, so like these, these characters are just phenomenally there. Uh, and... Sorry. Uh, and uh, starting at first level, everyone is doing cool crap. Like I think all of the... At will powers are very cool, and you still start with like your um, level one encounter powers, and you still have like level one uh, and uh, daily powers and things. So like ever like everyone has meaningful, cool stuff to do, starting at first level. Uh, players are have access to a bunch of skills, um, like and like class features and things that you can do i think the use of uh power sources is like drastically underused so like uh power sources there's the four power sources uh in the core book which is uh arcane divine martial and primal uh, uh primal shows up later doesn't it it does so in the core rule book there's the three power sources but still it gives each character like a thing that they are very specifically good at uh and then uh, when you start making your character, you're not, like, even though you don't get your Paragon class until like 11th level, you probably know what kind of character archetype you want to play the character into. Uh, fourth edition is very, very good at playing like big, heroic, like uh, big darn hero kind of styles of adventures. And everyone is a like a big darn hero. And so kind of like playing into those tropes and things like that uh and uh it's also has some things to do with magic magic is extraordinarily cheap uh, it's everywhere uh it is it is bonkers so like there are magic items in the player's handbook uh like this is a list of head slot magic items everything that is in yellow is a magic item and there are magical items that start at I'm pretty sure level two, like, here's a level one magic item. Level one magic item. Uh, yeah, and like all the magic items that you get that you don't want to use, they, like, they break down into residuum and stuff. And like magic items are everywhere, and for the most part, they're not super great. You have some of the default stuff of like the amulet of health, 
uh, and the amulet of protections and things like that um, where like you get more um, like resistances to things that you, and like better saving throws and things like that uh, but overall like the magic items with certain key builds where you like needed to be doing fire damage or a certain kind of damage or something like that uh, overall like you're like you could like there are some that are good there are some that are bad but like a lot of them have like daily powers or like uh, encounter powers or like are, have like very minor abilities kind of thing and so your magic items by and large don't necessarily matter and like this was like viewed as like a complaint against the system but really it means that you just get to, like whatever cool crap you want to be using is the cool crap that you can be using like it's very good um no class has very bad defenses so uh each of the defenses is tied to uh one of two stats uh, let me make sure that i am not lying to you about the thing that i'm about to say but my understanding if i remember correctly yeah uh okay so this isn't true so but uh each stat has like a strong uh or like has two th things that can affect the modifier for it uh, my brain initially was like there's a physical and a mental for each of them, but that's not true. Um, but uh, so you can, even if your stat is going to be bad in one of them, it's probably not going to be bad in both of them. Uh, and so you can use the top modifier of each of those. And uh, so like you don't have any like really bad defenses. Uh, and most characters have the option to attack multiple defenses, if not in their at wills and through their. Um, daily powers and their encounter powers and yeah so like you have like these big pulpy heroes that are capable of doing big pulpy things uh like if, if we go to the fighter uh like they have uh like cleave which lets you attack two things, like just at first level, and in the system where you have like minions and things like that, uh, we'll talk about, I'm gonna talk about this more in a moment, uh, but like the ability to just at first level attack two things for free, quote unquote, is very good. Uh, especially when there are things that have like one hit point. Um, but yeah, like, so Fighter at level 1 has a thing that lets them push a thing a square. And that's, like, already doing some cool stuff. Uh, and do, uh, they don't have any stances at level 1. Um, but, like, for example, uh, if we look at Villain's Menace, uh, it gives you, like, on a hit, a plus 2 power bonus to attack rolls and plus 4 power bonus to damage rolls against the target until the end of the encounter, which is basically just plus 2 to hit, and plus four damage against like your boss monster for the entirety of the encounter, which is very, very good. Uh, and even on a miss, you still get half of that, which is not great, but like it kind of creates that, even when you fail, you're not really failing. Uh, and yeah, and so uh, this is kind of like the baseline for stuff. We're gonna talk about some of the other problems that people had with it now uh, in a way that makes sense. So uh, like the length of the combat, and um, skill checks kind of come together for like how I think you should be playing this. Uh, every time that anything matters in fourth edition, uh, it should be in combat, or time should matter, and position should matter. It's why squares are so important to the game, and because it, it lets you build battle maps where everything is clear. And I would argue that many of the combats take forever because you're not supposed to like finish all the combats and. Sometimes your combats are going to be ones where uh, your so uh, for those of you who have never pay, played fourth edition, there are four roles, which is the controller, the leader, the striker, and the tank. We're just going to call them a tank. It's not called the tank. They don't call it the tank. Um, defender. That's what it is. And so like they all do different things. And so sometimes your controller is going to have a lot to do, uh, and like with the monsters and things. And sometimes they're not. And sometimes your striker is going to have a lot to do with the monsters, and sometimes they're not. And sometimes the defender is going to have a lot to do, and sometimes they're not. Sometimes the leader is going to have a lot to do, and sometimes they're not. But like that means that they can be free to do other crap, and there should be other objectives in your encounter. So you shouldn't just be fighting a monster. Like you shouldn't be 
like fighting the dragon. You should be fighting the dragon while trying to steal a treasure and then escape from its lair. Uh, and then each point in time, each part layer should be trying to do something to accomplish this goal. And sometimes uh, it's going to be punching the monster. Uh, and if you've played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, you know that frequently the best thing you can ever do is just punch the monster. Uh, but fourth edition, like you want to set up your encounters so that the most rewarding thing isn't necessarily punching the monster. Uh, like you, you have to punch the monster because, or some of the monsters around, so that you can accomplish the objective. And maybe you have to punch the monster a certain amount to do something. Like maybe the region you're after is like the dragon's blood, and it only like drops the dragon's blood uh, after you get it bloodied or something and so like you can incorporate these things uh, and this also addresses the problem of like combat feats and people being oh I can't ever hit the monster it's like well maybe you don't need to hit the monster every time and I'm not trying to dismiss like a lot of the overall math that's going on uh, because uh, if you can only hit 10% of the time that means your the monster math is bad uh, but even if you're hitting like 40% of the time, your monster math is still probably okay. Uh, and so you don't necessarily need to hit that extra 10-15% of the time. Yeah, uh, I think the, uh, the rituals and things like that and the ability to turn magic items into residuum is very good. And that rituals let you do all kinds of weird, crazy, cool magic crap. 4th uh, edition has a system in place for doing... The spooky magic crap that players want to do. And it doesn't do a good job of enabling this for martial heroes. Uh, just because like they don't ever ha get access to this other system. Uh, which So you still kind of run into the similar problem where like uh, after a certain point in time, if you're a martial hero, uh, like the biggest thing you can do to interact with the world is uh, run a kingdom. And all the other classes can still also run a kingdom. Because even though like leadership has uh, penalties for things with special abilities and powers like uh, familiar and things like things like that, um, they don't really come into play uh, in most of the campaigns that I've I've interacted with. Like the difference between a leadership score of eight and ten is marginal for them, for most people, um, and so. Anyway, that's a different other separate problem with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but yeah. I think that's my thoughts. Is like, You should be playing large, pulpy games about big darn heroes. And all of your encounters should be two things. You should be fighting people. And then you should also be trying to accomplish an objective. Uh, like A good example of this is like the climax scene in Bulletproof Monk. Where you're trying to get all of the like the parts of the scroll, uh, it's not, uh, they're trying to free the monks and fight the Nazis and do this other third thing that I can't remember right now. And like that's like that's really what you want, like this peak encounter design, uh, and for fourth edition. And like if you look at the Indiana Jones um, scene where they're getting on the blimp and he just throws them, he like. Indy just yeets the Nazi out of the blimp and like that is also peak character design or peak encounter design because like in fourth edition because you know where the Nazi is you know where the window is you can look at your powers you can understand and have complete knowledge of what your capabilities are and then you can just yeet a Nazi out the window using an at will power if you're a fighter um which is very cool. And I don't know. I think 4th edition gets a lot of crap. And it's mostly because people don't like drawing battle maps. And that people did not interact with combat correctly. Like their encounter design was focused on either I am interacting with like an NPC or a trap. Or I'm interacting with a combat encounter. When really what you should be doing is all three of these things. Um, because like even the skill system uh, and like the DMG talks about um, like mounting successes and if you get uh, six successes before you get three failures then do the thing and I feel like this is a lot more interactive and meaningful and easier to execute if you are engaging in uh, 
like skill encounters while doing other stuff like uh it turned like you can describe roll six successes before you roll three failures kind of constructively and meaningfully but you have to do a lot of work for it but if you're in a combat encounter then uh like each time you succeed you get closer to like accomplishing your objective obviously but you also have to defend the player who's doing those things and keep them alive and make sure that they are have the time to do the things that they need to do and i understand that means you probably have to crunch your time schedule or expand your combat rounds because a combat round is six seconds or 15 seconds uh and a lot of your skill checks are like one to two minutes but it's pretty trivial anyway it's late i'm tired uh but i wanted to make sure that i got this out today because i said it would if you have thoughts about fourth edition and combat and and, and encounter design and how i'm wrong i would love to hear them i would also like to think if you have, love to hear if you think i'm right because uh, i think i'm right and maybe i'm just not enunciating some points correctly and yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a second video of this and then just interact with that object. But probably not uh, just because I'm tired and bad at editing and bad at recording and filming. And part of what I'm trying to do is make it so that like the sound of my own voice doesn't, make, doesn't weird me out. So that when I talk about things that I do know that I have a lot of clarified thoughts on, that I can do that. Uh, but yeah. Have a good night. Take care, everybody. Like and subscribe.